unfold your sovereign plan raise up a chosen generation that will march through the land all of creation is longing for your unveiling of power would you release your anointing oh god let this be the hour let your glory fall in this room let it go your fragrance rest in this place as we gather to seek your face ruler of the nations the world has yet to see the full release of your promise the church in victory turn to us Lord and touch us make us strong in your mind to overcome our weakness that we may stand up and fight let your glory fall in this room let it go forth from here to the nations let your fragrance rest we gather to seek your face let your glory fall in this room let it go forth from here to the nations let your fragrance rest in this place as we gather to seek your face the tag let your kingdom come
to the nations let your fragrance rest in this place the word of God says in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters and God said let there be light and there was light God said let there be light and there was light when God says something it happens amen, amen. <laughs> hallelujah used to be an old commercial when E.F. Hutton speaks and everything gets quiet people listen I'm wondering when God speaks are we listening are we hearing the voice of God? Amen. This morning's message, if I can put a little title to it, the voice of the Lord. The voice of the Lord. Like the old song says, his voice, it makes the difference. When he speaks, it relieves my troubled mind. It's the only voice I hear that makes the difference. And I'll follow him one day at a time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus would tell us, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth, meaning God is still speaking out of the mouth of God. Hallelujah. Let's go before the Lord this morning. The voice of the Lord. Father, again, we are thankful for those gathered in your house and gathered in your name. We're thankful for the live stream audience that's with us this morning, too. And Father, we need the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We need your presence. God, it's not what we say, but it's what the Spirit of God can move upon our hearts and impress upon our souls. Touch us today. Fill our hearts with your word and with gladness and encouragement. For you have been good, Lord. And Father, we pray that your word will not return void, but it will accomplish that which you set it out to do. Help us this morning, minister truth, minister Jesus Christ, him crucified for us. And oh God, we just thank you and love you and give you praise and glory. And everybody said amen, amen. and amen. I remember hearing a quotation from a popular minister. Uh, he's got a TV program. He's not spirit-filled. His ministry supposedly is nearing 50 years of his life he has been serving the Lord in ministry. And he made a statement one time that I really bewildered me. But he said all his years of knowing the Lord and being a Christian and in ministry of the Word of God, he said, I've never one time heard the voice of God speak to me. I've never heard one time God's voice speak to me. And I have to wonder... That didn't sound right because it isn't right. Amen? You and I as a child of God, the Bible says very clearly, if we are His sheep, we will hear His voice. Amen? Amen? And I want to say another thing just for our dear brother, and I'm not sitting here trying to criticize or demean a man's ministry. That's not my heart. It was just a statement that kind of caught me off guard and I'm wondered, I'm thinking I'm born again since the fall of 84, amen? And I've heard the voice of God many times, not so much audibly, and he wasn't talking about just an audible voice, but when you open the pages of the Bible, it will talk to you, O child of God, amen? God's word will speak, it'll minister to your heart, amen? Hallelujah. And so, I was a little troubled with that. The voice of the Lord and His sheep hear His voice. Amen. I want to do a little more of a teaching this morning, but I want to lay a little bit of a foundation here. You and I as children of God, we learn to hear His voice. We learn to hear from God. I'm here to say, when you're a religious man, you really don't hear God's voice. You're not expecting to hear God's voice. But once you're born again, and once you have a new heart and a new spirit and Christ lives in you, 
There's something in your heart, child of God, that every day you want to hear from the Spirit of God. You want to hear something quick into your heart. You need encouragement. You need the voice of God. You need His Word. You need something from heaven. You need something that's living and alive that will feed you like bread to your soul. Amen. And I'm here to say that when God quickens His Word to your heart, and He can do that in many varied ways, amen? I found the best thing to do is open your Bible, read it systematically, and as you're reading with a prayerful heart and a prayerful conscience, you'll read and all of a sudden you'll hit a verse and that verse will illuminate to you, amen? It's God the Holy Spirit trying to get your attention with what He's giving you. And friend, I'm here to say that's His voice to your heart. That's His voice To your heart. Amen. God does speak. God does talk. And anybody that's born again will understand that. One of my favorite hymns. And listen to the words here. But you'll recognize the hymn as I read you the lyrics. And the dear brother that wrote this song. Knew a little bit about the voice of God. And it goes like this. I come to the garden alone. While the dew is still on the roses, and the voice I hear falling on my ear, the Son of God discloses. And He walks with me, and He talks with me, and He tells me that I am His own. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. Hallelujah. He speaks And the sound of his voice is so sweet, the birds hush, they're singing. And the melody that he gave to me within my heart is ringing. Hallelujah. The last verse goes like this. I'd stay in the garden with him, though the night around me be falling. But he bids me go through the voice of woe. His voice to me is calling. And he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me that I am his own. Hallelujah. And the joy we share as we tarry there, oh, none other has ever known. Praise God. Hallelujah. He'll talk to you. He'll lead you. He'll guide you. He'll speak his word to your heart. Amen. God will communicate with His children. He will communicate and give you vision and purpose and meaning of life. Amen. And you, my child, or God's child, can hear the voice of God. Amen. Don't let anybody tell you God doesn't speak to human beings no more, that God doesn't speak through His Word, or that you don't, you'll never hear the voice of God. I'm here to say, shut those voices out and hear the real voice. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. I thank God for His voice, and I'm rejoicing in that. Psalms 29 says this, Give unto the Lord, O ye mighty. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto His name, and worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. For the voice of the Lord is upon the waters, and the God of glory thundereth. Amen. His voice is upon the waters, and it says, He thundereth, His glory thundereth, for the Lord is upon many waters. Oh, the voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty, and the voice of the Lord breaketh the cedars. Yea, the Lord breaketh the cedars of Lebanon, and he maketh them also to skip like a calf, and Lebanon and Syrian like a young unicorn. For the voice of the Lord divideth the flames, and the voice of the Lord shaketh the wilderness. The voice of the Lord, I'm sorry, the voice of the Lord maketh the hinds to calve, and it discovereth the forests. And in his temple doth every one speak of his glory. For the Lord sitteth upon the flood. Oh, the Lord sitteth king forever, and the Lord will give strength unto his people, and the Lord will bless his people with peace. Amen. Your portion is the peace of God. It comes through the voice of God, through his word. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Now, back to our text this morning. You see, from the beginning, we see God not only is the creator of the universe and of the earth and the sea and the dry land, but He also created man. Amen. God is a creator, but God is a communicator. 
You will read, and God said in chapter 1, it's used 10 times and 615 times in the Bible. It says, and God said. Do you think God talks to us today? Do you think God has a voice 615 times in the Word of God? The Bible says, and God said. Amen? God was talking to someone, somewhere, somehow, in some way. Amen? The voice of the Lord will speak. Praise the Lord. And God said. See, God speaks and He makes Himself heard. And from the beginning, we see Him as the communicator along with being the creator. But God as communicator will make known His will to His people. In fact, in our text this morning, it said, God said, let there be light. Light was His desire. Light was His will in our text. Amen? As you read through that whole first chapter, you see the Lord did a whole lot of things in the renovation of the earth. But I'm here to make a point. God said, let there be light. That was His will. That was His desire. And guess what happened? He decreed His will by His word, and out of nothing, light came. Amen? The voice of the Lord is powerful. It thundereth. It moveth upon the face of the waters, it says in the Psalms. Amen? But when God speaks, it's done. Because that's the kind of God we serve. Amen? God is a communicator. He wants to commune with you. He wants to talk with you. As we read the lyrics to In the Garden, that individual, whoever wrote that song, obviously had a relationship with Jesus Christ. And he knew the Lord, and he knew the soft, still, smooth, kind, sweet voice of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. God's a communicator. He'll talk to you. He'll talk to you. Do you need wisdom? He'll talk to you. Do you need counsel? He'll talk to you. Do you need direction? He'll talk to you. Amen? Because God has a will for your life. And God is a communicator. God is not one to keep you in obscure darkness. God is not one to hide His voice from His child. God wants you directed. He wants you led. He wants you to hear Him. His sheep know Him and they hear His voice and they follow Him. Amen? Jesus would talk to those disciples, follow me, and they dropped their nets and they followed Him. Amen? Hallelujah. And the voice will always lead us to Jesus and it will always take us near His heart. The voice of the Lord will lead us to Calvary, to the cross, to the finished work of Christ, to the blood shed for you and I, I'm here to say the Lamb slain is the one who talks to you. Glory to God. Amen. As communicator, He'll make His will known to you, His child. You see, in the beginning, in the renovation, it began with the Spirit of the Lord moving upon the face of the waters. He decreed His will by saying, let there be, for light was His will. Even in the Lord's Prayer, it tells us, Thy will be done on earth, in earth, as it is in heaven. Not only does God decree a will from heaven in the realm of earth, but you and I is dust. God decrees His will be done in you. Amen. God decrees His will to be done in you and I. And I'm thankful for that. Because like sheep, we'd all easily go astray without His voice. Amen. You know what Jesus would even say in John 10? You get to know His voice so good, when somebody speaks to you, brings to you false doctrine, somebody brings to you a theology that is not kosher with Scripture and truth, you won't follow them because Jesus said, My sheep, they know My voice and they will not follow another. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm here to say, get to know that voice. The voice is coming through Calvary. It comes through the cross, the finished work, your victory, your provision through Him, through His work on Calvary's tree for you. What do I have to do, Pastor? Believe on Christ and Him crucified for me. That's it. And walk in that revelation. And watch what He does for you. Watch His grace abound. So God has a will and He communicates His will. But God as communicator also has a plan. The Bible says, let there be light, and the word of God is clear. And there was light. 
Light was God's will and plan in our text this morning, in this first couple verses we read. Light was His will, it was His plan, and it happened. I'm here to say, and I've heard this, and it's a borrowed statement. The will of God is seldom done in our lives, but the plan of God will always be accomplished. Amen? God's will is that none perish, that all would come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. But the truth is, very few will. But God's plan ultimately will always be fulfilled in spite of His will not being done all the time. Amen? So God has a will for you. We don't always obey His will. But the more we hear Him and cultivate an ear that could hear, even Jesus would say, take heed how you hear. Hear what? His voice speaking through His Word. Amen? Take heed how you hear. For with what measure you perceive it, it will be given to you. But what you don't perceive will be taken away. That's the words of Christ. In other words, if God is trying to lead my life, trying to direct my steps, He wants me to hear, and I'm kind of hearing, but I'm not really hearing and perceiving, because when you hear, it should hit your heart, it would settle into your spirit, it becomes part of you, and you walk it out. But if I don't do that, and I ignore the voice, then I start getting an ear that gets dull to His voice. And I start missing the promptings of the Holy Spirit where God is trying to lead me into His perfect plan. And that's why Jesus would tell us in the gospel, some bear a little bit of fruit, some bear medium fruit, and some bear a lot of fruit. It's really up to us how we respond and how we hearing His voice. So in our text this morning, we see God had a will. In our few verses, He willed there be light. His plan was that there would be light, and light came. Hallelujah. What God did through His plan is He implemented His desire. He initiated His plan and made known His intention. And God said, let there be, let there be what? Light. And guess what happened? There was light. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. How does that pertain to me today? God decrees things in your life. God wills things for you. Your part is to hear and follow by faith. And God will execute His plan, initiate and further His plan in your life. Hallelujah. Is His plan a good plan, Pastor? Oh, yes. Jeremiah 29 tells us, for a backslidden Israel... He even says what the Lord thought of them. He said, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. If you go a few more, another chapter or two, he says, Yeah, I will rejoice over them to do them good. And I will plant them in this land assuredly with my whole heart and with my whole soul. For thus saith the Lord, like I have brought all this great evil upon this people, so will I bring them all the good that I have promised them. Amen. Even in a backslidden state, God said, my ultimate plan for them is good. And I'm here to say to you and I, we can falter, we can stumble. At times we climb fool's mountain. At times we don't walk in obedience as we should. Sometimes God has to bring a chastening into our life. But ultimately his plan is good. And he's trying to bring us through something to get us into something. Amen. And he has a plan, but you're going to be led by his voice. He's going to speak. He's going to quicken your heart. He's going to let you know His desire. Hallelujah. We see it right from the beginning. And God said. Amen. Let there be. And His desire in that case was light and it came. When God says to your heart, let there be blessing. Let there be provision. Let there be an anointing. Let there be protection. Let there be prosperity. Let there be goodness. Let there be divine health. Let there be power. Let there be good things for which Christ died. I'm here to say it's a decree. And if God said it, it's going to happen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. So as God communicates, 
He makes known his will. He implements his plan and he does it all through his word. Listen to what Isaiah said in chapter 55. For as the rain cometh down and the snow from the heaven and it returneth thither, but, the wa- but it watereth the earth and it make it, it bring forth the bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. And so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. Amen? What God is saying, if He has spoken to you, if He has given you a promise, take it to the bank. It's coming, brother. Amen? It's going to happen. Amen? Because God just... You know, God isn't a rambler. He, 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 he's not a mumbler. He, he's just not a... You know, just talk, 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 talk. You know, sometimes we talk too much, we say a lot, but say nothing. Yeah. Amen. Don't, isn't that the way it is? We say a lot. You know people like that. They say a lot, but they say nothing. Amen. They make all these promises and it's just all talk. But when God talks, hmm, when God gives you a promise, when God quickens something to your heart and spirit, He's communicating to you. He's trying to get your attention, saying, I got something for you. Will you hear me? Will you listen to me? And then believe the voice. Believe the voice. Because when God gives you a promise, it won't return unto Him void. In other words, God is saying, when I speak something, I don't throw mud against the wall hoping a little bit of it will stick. When I say something, it's to the point. It's going to come. It's going to happen. Take it to the bank. Believe on me. Go away rejoicing. It's happening. Amen? Hallelujah. How many times did Jesus, in the healings of the gospel, he'd write mud in somebody's eyes that was blind. And then he'd say, now go wash. How can a blind man go wash in a river? He can't see nothing. I don't know. Hey, <laughs> man, think about it. But he walks away. How did that blind man know? He gave me his word. He told me to do what I had to do. And guess what? It happened. Hey, Amen. It happened. Those blinded eyes were opened. How did that happen? Jesus gave the word. The centurion servant with the sick daughter comes to Jesus. My daughter lieth home. She's sick. She may even be dead as I talk to you. And guess what? She did die. Jesus said, I'll come and I'll heal her. No, no, no. no. You're not, I'm not even worthy for you to come under my roof. But I know this. If you speak the word... If I could just get you, Lord, to speak the word. That, that's all I need. That's all I need. Listen, I'm in the military. When something is said, it gets done. It's not questioned. It's, it's when, when, the, when the commanders say something, it's law. Amen? It's going to happen. At least it's supposed to. And he understood that. And he understood Jesus as one having authority from heaven. And he said, just speak the word. And Jesus said, go in peace or your daughter's healed. And when he got home, she's up, she's fine, she's running around. He said, what time did she get touched? What time did she get up from the bed? And he found out it was the same time Jesus decreed the word to her and to him. Amen. It's the kind of God we serve. That's the kind of God we serve. Oh, you're not hearing this morning. That's the kind of God we serve. Amen. Oh, glory to God. Mm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So God will communicate. He'll make known His will to us. He'll implement His plan. And He does it all through His Word. Psalms 107 says, He sent His Word and He healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Hebrews would tell us the Word of God is quick, it's powerful, it's sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and the joints and marrow, and it is a discerner of the thoughts and intent of the heart. I'm here to say there's something to the voice of God. And you and I as a sheep can hear him. You can hear him. Oh, but pastor, uh, I'm not as spiritual as others. That has nothing to do with it. Are you born again? Is Christ in your heart? Then you're his sheep. And Jesus made it clear. He knows his sheep. His sheep know him. And you can hear his voice. 
you can hear his voice. But pastor, I, I'm just not living quite the way I should. You can still hear his voice. You may hear it as, it may be a voice of conviction, a voice of turn from the wickedness, turn from the wrong direction, turn from your sin. That's the voice of God too. Satan ain't telling you turn from your sin, turn from your iniquity, turn from your evil. He's not telling you that. He's saying, hey, go deep, go headlong into it. Go deep into it. But the voice of God says, no, come out. Come out. Come out and be separate. And I'll be a father unto you, he says. Don't touch the unclean thing. That's a voice too. And I think that's a voice most of us need to be listening to. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So he does it all through his word. So again, as communicator, he makes known his will. He implements his plan. He does it all through his word. But as communicator, he will establish his law. In other words, when God speaks, it's within the boundaries of the scriptures. We got a lot of popcorn prophets running around the country divinating over God's people, saying, thus saith the Lord over you. And according to Jeremiah, God's people love it that way. But I'm here to say, we are never to get lazy as it regards our time in the scriptures. Well, I struggle with reading the word of God, then read one verse at a time. It may take you 10 years to get through it, then read one verse at a time. You can read one verse, amen? Come on, you can read the magazines. You can read things on the bulletin board at where you work. Amen. You can read things that you are interested in. You can spend hours on Facebook and read people's posts. But you can't read the word of God? No, 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 no. There's a power, an entity trying to hinder you because God, Satan knows you get into the word, you'll start hearing him. Amen? And you'll get on your feet spiritually. Amen? And you'll be a threat to the kingdom of darkness. Amen? Hallelujah. I'm in trouble with my mic here today. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So as communicator, he'll establish his law. The note I have written down here, creation will function within its boundaries preset by God. In Genesis 1, 1, 1, 1, 14, it says, And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs, for seasons, for days, and for years. In other words, when God put his decree to renovate the earth and he put the, how can I say, flung the stars into space, created the sun and the moon, he set boundaries by which they function. Do you realize those boundaries by the decree of God? They can set atomic clocks by the rotation of the universe. Do you know that? Amen. Everything in the Universe of God is explicitly timed right to the millisecond. Amen. Think about that this morning. All by the decree of God. God as communicator will establish His law. He'll let you know His will, His plan, His word, but it always has the boundaries of His word. Amen. Listen to what Psalms 104 says. God, who laid the foundations of the earth, that it should not be removed forever. And by the way, we don't need a new green deal. Amen? Because as long as the earth remains, there will be summer, winter, I'm here to say, springtime, seed time and harvest, nothing will change. Amen? Hallelujah. I'm all for taking care of our planet. In other words, when you drive down the highway, you see all that junk and paper and McDonald's wrappers? I don't know who the pigs are that throw that stuff out the window, but it could start with them. Amen. Just <laughs> throw your garbage away where it belongs. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. But the crazy stuff they got going. See, the farther you get from God, the more foolish and stupid you become. Uh, amen. The darkness becomes light to them. 
and light becomes darkness. Evil is good and good becomes evil. Think about that. God established His law, who laid the foundations of the earth that it should not be removed forever. He covers it with the deep as with a garment, and the water stood above the mountains. At thy rebuke they fled, at the voice of thy thunder they hasted away. They go up by the mountains, they go down by the valleys into the place that thou hast founded for them. Thou hast set a bound that they may not pass over, and they turn not again to cover the earth. I'm here to say, God has set the boundaries of the oceans, of the continents, of the rivers, and the main rivers that flow through the lands. That was all carved by the finger of God. And nothing can overpass unless God wills it, amen, or allows it. Hallelujah. I know we see flooding at times and and severe weather and things can happen and beaches can be eroded. But if you've noticed, we've never had the Pacific Ocean flow into Wisconsin. The Great Lakes have not drained out, and and all of a sudden we find them down in Mississippi. He has set bounds. He has set bounds. How did that happen? By the voice of God. God has set boundaries for you and I. He has set boundaries for this world. Jesus even said that, look at Job. God even set bounds for Satan. You can only do so much to him. Amen? Amen? God sets boundaries in your life. And thank God for boundaries. Well, I just just feel like I'm so held in. I'm in a prison. I just don't. Well, first of all, find the will of God. Let God implement his plan. Amen. And sometimes the Lord has set bounds for you and I. Because the Bible says clearly, in Christ, you cannot do the things you would. If I, listen, you let a prisoner out of prison 90% of the time. They've been contained. They've been, how can I say, their life has been organized and ordered by schedules. And now they get out and they're, they, they get, in their liberty, they get foolish. They don't know what to do with all this freedom. And they self-destruct. Amen. You and I need some restrictions in our life. That's where God's law comes in. God will speak His word, will implement His plan, will hear His voice, but it will always be within the bounds and parameters of what is right, what is holy, what is pure, and what is in His perfect will for our life. And when you try to hop over the fence and go AWOL from God's plan, that's why it never works out for that person. Come on. It never works out until you have the word of God. You look at the life of Joseph. Joseph, lied upon, hated upon, sold into slavery, finds himself falsely accused, now he's in prison. What has that poor boy done to deserve all that? You ever wonder that in your own life? <laughs> I, heard, I heard some <laughs> people are talking today, amen. I hear your voice, amen. A few of you say, oh yeah, I know what that's about. Well, I don't know if any of us can stand in Joseph's shoes, but I'm here to say, at times you will find your life as a child of God hemmed in by circumstances that are beyond you. It may be a marital boundary. It may be an employment boundary. It may be a limitation because of health. It could be other situations. It could be we, we, we bit off a big chunk of stupid like Curtis Hutchinson would say. And now we got some consequences to deal with. Amen. You know, believe it or not, I've heard of people that thought, well, you know, as a free citizen in a free country, we don't have to pay income taxes. So they stop paying income taxes, and it ain't long. They're in trouble, and they find themselves looking at four walls. Paul would say, give tribute to whom tribute is due. Jesus said, look at the coin. Give the Caesar what's his. He wasn't justifying taxation, but he says in a fallen world, there's going to be some unjust taxation. Pay your bills, pay your dues, pay your taxes, amen, your fair share, whatever, and give the rest to God because he'll take care of you, amen. The point being, there's boundaries. We all have boundaries. And maybe you find yourself like Joseph, and, but you know what God says about Joseph? The Lord was with Joseph. The Lord was with Joseph. Joseph are you hearing God in his prison in all those years of abuse 
being lied upon, falsely accused. The young boy kept his faith in God. And God was with him. And you know what the Word of God said? And God prospered him in the prison. There was boundaries. There was the law of God. He wasn't going to get beyond the law of the land at that point. But guess what? There was a higher law. And in due time, God brought him out because that was his plan. Amen. God will bring you out when it's time. Amen. And sometimes being brought out is being taken to glory. In a fallen world, nothing works like it should, folks. Ultimately, we'll be carried out of this life alive into the saving arms of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's the ultimate healing above all things. But in this life, there's some good coming to you. Amen. God's voice thundereth. It moves upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be, and there was. And God will say that to you. Let there be health. Let there be blessing. Let there be provision. Let there be encouragement. Let there be life. Let there be power. Let there be mercy. And folks, we need a lot of mercy. Amen. He'll send his word. He'll send his word to you. He'll send his word in spite of you. Hello? In spite of me. Oh, I love that. I need a lot of mercy. I am not a perfect man, only in Christ. But I'm still being sanctified. I'm still being developed. God is still, and, and don't, don't, you know, put the halos away, but in you too. He's doing a work in you. Every day, you've been seven days since the last time we gathered in this house. Seven days, God's been working on your life, trying to make you a little more like Jesus Christ. Amen. And guess what will happen this week? He's going to keep working on you, making you and I a little more like Jesus Christ. Let's button this up here. So he establishes a law. But as a communicator, not only does he let us know his will, implements his plan through his word. He does it through his word. He establishes boundaries through his law. But as communicator, God makes known to man his purpose. His purpose. In Genesis 1, 26 through 28, it says, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them and said unto them, Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, have dominion over the fish, over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. So the purpose of God through his voice and through the decree of God was that man, number one, would become fruitful, productive. His voice will always lead you to being fruitful and productive. Jesus gave a story in the Gospels. Why are you standing here idle? There's so much to get done. There's people that could use your services. Why are you standing here idle? Well, no man has hired us yet. Well, he said, now come into the vineyard. I'll put you to work. God has a work for you. Hello? God has a work for you, child of God. Amen. That work may be in your house, in your family, in your marriage, in your grandbabies. It may be in your sons, your daughters, your mama or daddy. It may be where you work. It may be in your boss. It may be in your fellow employees. It may be with the one you're running to at the gas station or Walmart. But God has a purpose for you. Amen. And that is to bring forth light and truth and be a witness for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He said, be fruitful. And then he said, multiply. A lot said about multiplication. God wants to multiply you. Hallelujah. Moses would say in Deuteronomy chapter 1, God make you a thousand times more than you are. God wants to increase you. In fact, the word blessing, bless, means to increase. God wants to increase your life. 
Well, how do I know He'll do it? Because you're a child of God. You're born again. You belong to Jesus Christ. And your faith is in the crucified and the benefits for what He won for you at the cross. He will multiply you. He will increase you. He said, replenish the earth. That was man's purpose. That means to refill it, spread out, occupy. Isaiah would say, stretch forth thy curtains, enlarge the place of thy tents. God has more for you, child of God. God has more for you than what you have now. Amen. And that's not always regarding wealth and possessions. That can be in the mix. But the real increase of your life is increasing in the knowledge of the Son of God. More of His anointing in your life. More of His power in your life. More of His love, goodness, and mercy in your life. Hallelujah. God wants to multiply you. And not only that, but He wants your life to touch others that they can see the goodness of God in the face of Jesus Christ. That's what God has for every child of God. Every child of God. That was man's original purpose. Be fruitful, multiply, replenish. Replenish. Occupy. That means as a productive citizen in a free society, when voting time comes around, get out and cast your one vote. You occupy till he come. I, I'm amazed the amount of Christians that say, oh, we shouldn't even talk about political stuff. My God, don't you got grandkids? Don't you got sons and daughters that are having to carve out a life in a fallen world? And we have a free society and all it takes is a, couple, a good number of good people to cast a vote to hold back the tyranny of bad government. Amen. Amen. And then we get criticized. Why are you saying that you should, you should be preaching the word? This is, this is the, 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 the political and politics and religion don't mix. No, what doesn't mix is a person with that mindset. Amen. Hallelujah. Occupy. Occupy. He said replenish the earth. And then he says, I'm, I'm almost done here too. He said subdue it. Be fruitful, multiply, replenish it, subdue it. That means walk in godly authority, Adam. Whatever resistance comes your way, overtake it by the power of God. Hello. This is what the voice of God will do for you and do for me. It all comes through the cross. It's all part of the crucified. What he did to give you authority and power. To hold back the floodgates of darkness. And it begins in your heart first. Then in your home. Then in your marriage. Then in your children. Then in your grandchildren. Then in where you work. In the little realm. The little neighborhood where you live. You subdue and hold back the flood tides of darkness. By the power and the authority of Christ in your life. I'm not saying you walk around with a hammer. I'm not saying you go on Amazon and buy your own stoning kit so you can stone everyone that's not lining up with Scripture. Faith works by love, my friend. And if you pick up the sword, you'll perish by the sword. That means by the power and the authority, by the grace of God working in your life. Amen. You're a threat to the kingdom of darkness. Amen. I'm here to say, by your stand in Jesus Christ, Others will be convicted, and others will give you respect. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Musicians, please. This all comes through the voice of God. God told Adam and Eve, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, have dominion over it, be the head and not the tail, reign in life by Jesus Christ. Because that's your portion. That's your portion. Your portion is to reign in life in the authority of Christ. Hello? Paul said we'd reign in life by the grace of God. Now, to summarize this morning's message, God will make known His will. 
He will implement, implement his plan in our lives. It'll all be according to the word of God. Always within the boundaries of his law, which is his word. And it's according to his and our designed purpose. As a child of God, Paul said our life is not our own. For we are bought with a price. And then he goes on to say that's why you can't do the things you would. You're a purchased possession. You've been borrowed righteousness from heaven through the Son of God. Everything you need comes through Calvary. And God blesses you according to the Christ in you. Because that's the only thing God has decreed that he will bless in fallen man is Christ in you. Amen. His voice is speaking. His voice will make a difference. When he speaks, it will relieve your troubled mind. As I said earlier, it's the only voice that makes a difference. And folks, we're learning to follow him one day at a time. Hallelujah. You can't lose in Jesus Christ. You can't. Can we stand? Can we stand? Hallelujah. Maybe you're here this morning and you've been struggling, at least in your own self. I don't know if I'm hearing from the Lord as I ought to. I don't know if my ear is in tune to the Spirit of God as it should be. Pastor, I think there's times God has dealt with me and spoke to my heart, but I, I, I laid that voice down. I didn't respond by faith to it. And things haven't gone well, Pastor. There's things in my heart, in my life, in my family, in my situation, my marriage, my children. There are things where I work. There are just things in my heart. There are just things that I just need His voice. I heard what you preached this morning, Pastor, and I believe that I am His sheep, and I believe I can hear His voice. If you're here this morning, I'm going to ask us if we can just come to this altar. I think a lot of us can. And you're going to ask the Lord... Help me get a spiritual ear. Help me, Lord, to discern your voice again. That I can clearly be led by the Spirit of God. That I can clearly understand and perceive what you're saying to me. That I can walk with you in that revealed truth and see the blessing and the fulfillment of the Lord in my life. Can we come to this altar this morning? I'm going to ask those that help us pray. If you need somebody to pray with you. But I believe a lot of us have struggled hearing the voice of God. And through the message this morning, it's just a little reassurance that God does speak, and He's still speaking. And He wants to talk to you. He wants you to hear Him because you're His child. He's got a lot to say to you. Will you come this morning? Will you come as we sing a song? Can we sing a song? the Holy Spirit draw you this morning. Don't be ashamed. Don't be embarrassed. Come. Let's come. I think we all need Him to touch us. Let the Spirit of God draw your heart this morning. Don't hold back. Oh, my life Just take a step of faith. So, right now. Let so the Spirit of God draw you. If you need prayer. With every breath that I am able, I will sing. I 
of the goodness of God. Anybody let the Lord draw your heart. I this love day. your voice. Just call on his name. Call on his name. You have led me through the fire. He wants to lead you. He wants to speak to you. In darkest night. He has much to say to you. You are close Hallelujah. like no other. Anybody here this morning? Anybody I've known here? you as a father. Known you as let him draw a friend. Your let him bring you near to to the cross, the in blood the goodness of God. In all my life, you have been faithful. In all my life, you have been so, so good. With every breath that I of the goodness of God. In all my life you have been faithful. In all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I is running after it's running after me your goodness is running after it's running after me with my life laid down I'm surrendered now I give you everything your goodness is running after it's running after the goodness of God. One more time. Yes, all my life you have been faithful. Hallelujah. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every Of the goodness of God, I will sing of the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness.